Fibromyalgia is a chronic condition characterized by widespread pain and hypersensitivity to pressure. The name comes from fibra, which means fiber in Greek for fibrous tissue, myo referring to muscle, and alga to pain. It is estimated that up to 8% of the population is affected. However, the majority of these are not diagnosed. Females are twice as likely to have the condition as males, and it is diagnosed most commonly between the ages of 35 and 45, although it can be diagnosed at any age. The primary symptoms include chronic widespread pain, increased pain in response to tactile pressure, called allodynia, fatigue, cognitive impairment or brain fog, and sleep disturbance. There are several other possible symptoms too, including anxiety and depression, muscle spasms, pins and needles known as paresthesia, nausea, and dysmenorrhea in females. Weight gain and cold sensitivity are also possible. Conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, temporomandibular joint disorder, and chronic fatigue syndrome seem to have a link with fibromyalgia. Therefore, jaw pain and gastrointestinal symptoms can also be present. The cause for fibromyalgia is not currently known. Some hypotheses include central sensitization, where it's believed that these patients have more sensitive detection of pain, leading to a lower threshold for pain. It is thought that there is hyperexcitation of pain-sensing neurons and underactivity of the inhibitory pathways for pain. Often, there is an emotional or physical stress that acts as a triggering factor, and as we said, fibromyalgia is linked with conditions that have a stress component, like irritable bowel syndrome, temporomandibular joint disorder, and chronic fatigue syndrome. As well as a manifestation, sleep disturbance appears to be another risk factor, as a smoking, obesity, and sedentary lifestyles. There is no specific test used to diagnose fibromyalgia, and in the majority of cases, tests that are done come back as normal. In 1990, the American College of Rheumatology produced criteria based on tender points to diagnose fibromyalgia. In total, there were 18 points and the pain needed to be widespread, affecting all four quadrants of the body, as well as being persistent for more than three months. In 2010, these were revised. This included a widespread pain index based on which areas of the body had been affected in the last two weeks, giving one point for each affected area, giving a range between 0 and 19 points, and then the symptom severity score, meaning the severity of fatigue, waking up unrefreshed, cognition, and the general somatic symptoms each scoring between 0 and 3 points, making a total of 0 to 12. Overall, the criteria was a widespread pain index of 7 or greater and symptom severity score of 5 or more, or widespread pain index of 3 to 6, but with a symptom severity of 9 or greater. The symptoms had to have been present for more than 3 months and no other condition could be present to explain the symptoms. Some studies suggest that 66% of people diagnosed with fibromyalgia may have other medical conditions instead. Examples include lupus, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, polymyalgia rheumatica, hypothyroidism, and nerve compression syndromes like carpal tunnel syndrome, to name a few. It is thought that four subtypes of fibromyalgia exist, and these are an extreme sensitivity to pain without any psychiatric condition associated, fibromyalgia with pain-related depression, depression with concomitant fibromyalgia syndrome, and fibromyalgia due to somatization, meaning displaying psychological distress in the form of physical symptoms. There is some controversy with fibromyalgia. The International Classification of Diseases, or ICD-10, lists fibromyalgia as a disease entity alone and advises it should be classified as a functional somatic syndrome 
meaning a chronic disease with no identifiable cause rather than a mental disorder. However, the preliminary ICD-11 has characterized fibromyalgia as a chronic widespread pain. Many question whether or not it is a disease entity at all. Due to the unexplained nature of fibromyalgia, there is no cure or specific treatment, and management is usually targeted at symptom management. Non-pharmacological therapies are used alongside medication, with exercise being the most effective, boasting significant evidence that suggests it can reduce the symptoms of pain and fatigue. Aerobic exercise is mostly recommended, but therapies such as yoga can also help. Cognitive behavioural therapy has been shown to have a small beneficial effect on reducing pain, and measures should also be taken to reduce stress levels that may be the trigger. Good sleep hygiene is also recommended, which includes setting a routine, avoiding caffeine and large meals before bed, not using screens in the hour before bed, and making sure the room is dark and comfortable. As for medications, the US Food and Drug Administration has approved three main drugs for fibromyalgia. These include the serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor antidepressants, duloxetine and milnocyprin, and pregabalin, which is a form of anticonvulsant medication. The tricyclic antidepressant amitriptyline is also often used. Opioid use is controversial and not currently approved by the FDA for fibromyalgia. Over-the-counter medication like paracetamol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories have not been shown to be effective in fibromyalgia itself, but are useful in reducing the pain triggers of fibromyalgia.